So how's the conference gone so far? Has it been uh, a lot of good stuff so far? Any surprises? It's all been terrible. Why, thank you. It's good to hear that. I've, hmm. There's, it's going to continue that trend. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. See, I still wonder if... <laughs> I still wondered... Um, it, it, him, did any of you go to the replicate? You know, oh, yeah, three of you. No, uh, the one I did this morning about uh, database replication. And uh, I always try to have a catchy title in any presentation I do. And so, like, last year for this conference, I did, um, uh, what did I do last year? The Old Man and the Sequel. <laughs> and then another one I like, I've done a few times, is uh, A Tale of Two CTEs. And if you don't know much about it, oh, see, I see, okay. Okay, um, a series of unfortunate database events. Um, and so this morning I had a presentation, database replication. But uh, right before I thought of, right before the final version, I, I uh, came up with the subtitle of Send in the Clones. Maybe I should have put that in the thing. So are, are we ready to, I have 20 seconds? Everyone's here that cares, though, right? Okay. I'm here. Well, you know, there was another presentation I wanted to go to at this time, but they told me I couldn't do it. Okay. Okay, but we are, we're, we're ready to start. Okay, well, my name is Tim Rogers. I've been here at Clearwater for just over 10 years. It'll be 11 years next month. And uh, I'm a database administrator. I tend to focus more on the uh, development or the application interaction with the database than with the underlying engine. And uh, uh, I, don't know, I just have more fun with that. And this presentation uh, is a little more in that kind of a focus. So the SQL gods must be crazy. And as you might have guessed, this is based on, the name is based on a 1980 movie set in Botswana where uh, a Coke bottle, such as this, um, I don't know, if the, probably not this one, but was uh, <laughs> carelessly tossed out of an airplane and it uh, lands near some village there and the natives find this and this, the thing is just confusing. It has, makes no sense at all compared to, based on all of their prior experience. And uh, I got to thinking that there are a lot of things in SQL that behaviors that make no sense at all based on your prior experience with SQL. Even, we, we may surprise, I, I, I expect to surprise most everyone, so we'll see. So um, this was going to be live demos, but it turns out that I wanted to jam so much stuff into my limited time uh, that uh, the danger of anything going wrong in a live demo and also the speed and so forth. So these were live when I took the screenshots. <laughs> so. Um, so there you go, yeah. So, so behaviors that make no sense at all. So you would think the SQL guys were crazy. Why does it do that? Ideally, though, we will try to make sense of almost all of them, or we will just, just shake our heads and, and complain on any others that we don't make sense of. And then more of the same and more of the same and that sort of thing. So, um, so like I said, this is going to be... Um, uh, we're gonna, we're gonna be interactive. It is that sleepy time of day, so uh, we're gonna get excited here, or we're gonna try. And uh, this is, I'm just showing this as a pattern of how we're going to do most of these. I'm going to show you a query, and this, is, this one uh, will seem really obvious, but I wanted to at least establish the pattern of how we can go about this. So I will show a query. You can see that it's highlighted in lines 13 and 14. And then down below, you can see the results of it. And then generally, there may be some exceptions, but uh, generally, there will be some, another statement commented out and the question is, based on what you see happening in the one I ran there, what do you expect to see to happen when I run the one that's commented? Okay, does that make sense? And uh, so, and I want you to say, you know, like, be bold, and don't worry if you get it wrong. That's my goal for you to get it wrong. Uh, don't, don't worry if you get it wrong. Uh, just say what you think the answer is. So in this one, we see that when you add three billion and one billion, duh, you get four billion. And so what, what are you going to get if you add 2 billion and 2 billion? And here's the prep one. And so what are you going to get? 4 billion. 4 billion. Of course not. <laughs> First Coke bottle. Didn't expect that. <laughs> you can't add 2 billion and 2 billion. Why can't you add two numbers? 
Well, what's the exception say? Error, arithmetic error, overflow error, converting an expression to data type int. So what's happening there, uh, an integer is in the range of negative 2.1 billion to positive 2.1 billion and change or so forth. And so, okay, those two integers by themselves, fine, but you add them together, four billion doesn't fit, exception, okay. That, ex that makes sense. Now the other one doesn't make sense. Kind of, uh, it's not a long end, so, uh, but you got the right idea. So three billion is definitely not an integer. So what it does is these are implicit data types. We didn't cast anything there, so it just has to make an assumption. I hope I know what you wanted. And so what it does here is it does fixed position decimal numbers. And so the three billion was a fixed position decimal number. Decimal, not decibel. Eh, maybe it was loud too, I don't know. Um, <laughs> And so you can easily add, you know, another billion to that. Okay, that makes sense? So implicit data types. If you don't tell it what it is, it makes assumptions. Sometimes it may not be the assumption you wanted it to make. Okay, that was supposed to be the example. But okay, uh, so rounding numbers. I never heard this, but that's kind of cute. Five or more, let it soar. Four or less, let it rest. Oh, whatever, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, so you may not be familiar with there's a round function in SQL where that you pass in uh, the two, two things you pass into it. One is the number you want to be rounded. And then the second value is the number of decimal places you want it to be rounded to. And so here is an example of running that. I, I, if I tell it to round 8.5 to zero decimal places, I get 9.0. And I get the same result when I do 9.4. Okay, the uh, proposal is that we run the statements below there, rounding 9.5 and 10.4. Will those both round to 10? Will one of them round to something else? That's, there's supposed to be noise when, you, when I do this. Cool. Wait, is it gonna be both 10? Both, mostly both 10? Okay, no, okay, here's last chance to change your mind. Exception, another exception. It may, uh, uh, by the end of this, you may think that SQL doesn't do anything except just throw exceptions. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, oh, uh, Coke bottle, Ex yeah, unexpected. Uh, so, rounding. Well, it's another data type issue. On that first one, 9.5, it doesn't assume that is a float. It assumes it is a fixed position decimal. So, oh, well, what's, what's that fit into? One, value, one digit to the left of the decimal place and one digit to the right of the decimal place. We're good with that. But fin, fin, 10, 10 doesn't fit into that. On the second one, not a problem, 10.4, two digits to the left of the decimal, one to the right, round that down to 10, no problem. Note, I'm gonna, at the bottom we have uh, messages and results, I'm gonna flip to the results portion down there. And you can see that this was really just a runtime error, it continued running the batch, so it didn't, it couldn't, couldn't do that first step. But on the last one, that ran fine, it got 10 from 10.4. Okay, does that make sense? At least more than it did? <laughs> okay. Comparing a number to a string. I use Google Images a lot. Uh, that, that was actually two images, I'll have to confess. I didn't. Um, so I need to do a little setup here. I'm going to create a table, call it test table. I'm going to have it with two columns in it, an ID, which is the type of integer, and a name, which is a varchar10 or varchar10 or whichever, wherever you go, var10. <clears throat> I'm going to insert some rows in it and then uh, actually I'm showing the results of that, showing what we get in that table. That select statement at line 67 has already been executed and you see down at the bottom what the values are. What's commented is we're lines 70 through 72 and we're going to say in, for which of those rows does the ID equal the name? Now it looks, seems pretty obvious on the first one they're equal. On the second one, does two equal zero two? Well, maybe yes, maybe no. Three, no, that's not gonna be the case. Four, maybe. So how many rows are we gonna get when we run this next statement? Zero. Zero. Four, zero, and two. No one said three? What? <laughs> Someone said exception, okay. So we pretty much covered it. Negative eight, do we hear negative eight? Okay, okay. Okay, here's last chance to change your mind. And we get an exception, yeah, that's right. S-E-Q-U-E-L, SQL exception language. Um, conversion failed when converting the var car type value X, Y, Z to an integer. Now that seems a little strange. Why did it convert the string 
to an integer, wouldn't it have been easier to convert the integer to a string? Wouldn't that have made more sense? Yeah, the integer listed first. No, that's a good thought. The integer listed first. No, the reason, so, yeah. Good thought. He's saying that it looks at the first row and parses it, uh, makes a decision based on the first row and then does the rest by using that same rule. It, there's a, there is a, an, a hierarchy of data type conversions that SQL has built in. There's something like 30 plus data types, but in general, there's some, uh, some date and time and special ones at the, high, at the highest end. And then below that is the various numerical ones, the integer and float and, and decimal and so forth. And then below that are the string type things, var, car, and, and so forth. And then at the lowest level are the binaries. So the, as I said, there's 30 something in there, but those general blocks are, are something that might be worth remembering because integer or integer is in that numeric block and string is in that next block down, or varkar is, and so therefore it assumes to convert the lower one to the higher one, unless you tell it. Again, we're dealing with implicit things here. So, um, so yeah, it felt that it, it saw that the ID was an integer and the name was a string, so we gotta convert them both to an integer to, to compare them. It will not compare things that are of different types, but if you force it to, then it will try to figure out its own way of converting one or the other, okay? Uh, so yeah, XYZ is not an integer, shock. Now let's look at the output there though. We did, it, this seems to be um, a runtime error as well where that it did the first two okay and now we do see that two and zero two were equal because it converted the zero two to an integer and that, that worked, okay? So uh, let's move on. We're, there is this cool function. Yes? A good point. Okay, how much of this is specific to Microsoft SQL versus to others? And I am actually not sure on some of these. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I, I am not sure. I suspect most, um, but I don't know for sure. Uh, okay, so we have in lines 75 and 76, I've run this to show an additional, the additional output you get if we ask for uh, the results of using an is numeric function. Hey, there's a function that says, is it numeric or not? And so that seems kind of convenient and we can clearly see that on line three, the XYZ returns zero, so it is not numeric. Then if we run 75 through 77, we see the results of hey, we left out line three. Our exception is gone. So now the question is, will we get two or three rows when we run 75 through 78? How many rows will we get? Two. Two rows, I hear. I should be an auctioneer. Uh, two, two or three, somebody, I'll say three. Oh, you're on the exception <laughs> list. Well, you should feel exceptional because you're right. <laughs> Now wait a minute, wait, wait, this, this seems wrong. There shouldn't be a Coke bottle on this one because is numeric just told us that the dollar four was numeric and now it's saying it can't convert it to a number. It lied. It's just, it just, uh, it doesn't, uh, doesn't, doesn't work for this. <laughs> so this is just to be bold and say that. So, um, here, here we have another approach that I would recommend, what, something I would do, is there, no, there is another function that uh, if you tell it to convert and it can't do the conversion, it throws an exception. But there is a try underscore convert where that instead of throwing an exception if it doesn't work, it just gives you null. And so now we can operate with this. And now you can see then that, that result set down at the bottom on one and two, uh, the try convert gives numbers one and two, and on the on three and four it gives null. And so when we run this, uh, where id equals try convert, now we're back to that same question, or are we? How many rows will we get? Two. Two. Hey, finally we got it right. Wow. Well, okay. <laughs> so there's hope, somewhat hope. So um, okay, then let's look at rows 101 through 104. 
That is exactly the same statement as previous, except the difference is in line 98 versus 104. Instead of waiting for it to do the implied conversions, which has been the problem we've introduced on all these, you don't tell it what you want, it'll try to figure out something and that may not be what you wanted. Here we're going to actually convert the ID to a string and then compare that to the, uh, to the name. So how many rows will we get where the converting to a varchar 10, the ID, and then comparing that to the name, how many rows will we get with that? One. Yes. Hey, hey, it's up to me. Finally got something we expected. Okay. Bonus question. What if we tell it to sum the name values for that one row? Everything else, again, is the same. The where clause is the same as the previous one. If we sum the name where they're equal, so it's going to be that first row where the value is one, what will the sum be? Yeah, exception. I'm going to use, I'm going to break this if I grab it too much. Um, yeah, so even though the one is implicitly convertible, the, the string one is implicitly convertible to the integer one, uh, that aggregate function says, I'm not going to bother with that. Just by definition, you have to give me a numeric if you want me to sum something. So, um, so here's how you would actually do that. Here's, here's the proper way. Just, once again, we want to do explicit conversions when we can, or expect a surprise if there are certain situations where those implicit uh, conversions of data types don't do what we hope for. How many of you remember the uh, O.J. Simpson trial? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I, Before we go off that real quickly, would it be better if we were to do where name equals ID and then where else equals ID? It would, um, the question is, would it matter whether we did name equals ID versus ID equals name? It would not. Um, I remember working with Sybase some large number of years ago where um, uh, some of those things did make a difference. But um, at least the current, and then over the last several years, SQL Engine will almost universally rewrite your query anyway. So you may say it one way and it will take what you intended and rewrite it another way and then optimize that. And so, no, it won't make a difference with, with which side of the equal sign you put things on. Okay. That's a good question. Um, let's see, okay. So yes, the O.J. Simpson trial. I was actually working in a law firm when this got announced and we had a TV or a thing set up in a conference room. Uh, so if it doesn't fit, you must, is that, is that what Johnny Cochran said? You must truncate? <laughs> Whatever, okay. So, but the, yeah, I just couldn't help thinking of that. So let's look at some more data, uh, showing the before and after uh, from that test table, looking only at one particular row where the ID is two. And I have set it, set the name to be the string TWO, and showing before and after, just show the pattern of what we're gonna do in the next one. Because what we're gonna do in the next one is tell it to set that name to be something that is way too much for a var chart in. So what will it do here? Will it truncate? Will it acquit? Exception. Will it, exception? <laughs> so I've got too many people trained to say exceptions. There'll be, there, uh, uh, yes, so what do you think? Truncate or exception? Exception. Good mix, I like that. It's, it's, uh, it's a good, good mix. Well, it truncates. Now I like this. Notice there was no Coke bottle symbol by that because I really don't want it to truncate my data when Maybe I didn't want it to. If I, were, if I were willing for it to truncate it, I would tell it that. I would want to tell it that. I would want to say substring and then put it into this value. Um, a really uncomfortable thing is that uh, parameters on store procedures behave just like variables do here. So, wait a minute. Jumping ahead. Oh, hope you didn't catch, you weren't listening, I hope. Okay, so um, I looked at this too many times. Okay, so it does throw an exception uh, because it doesn't fit and it warns you that um, it, it's overflow. Okay, uh, but if we look at the results tab, we do see that the before and after worked and although it was a runtime exception, it continued to show the before and after results. So it shows it didn't scramble it or anything, it left it where it was. So that's a good thing. Okay, the only thing different here is that I'm telling it to declare a variable of varchar10, 
put the value into that, and then assign the value of the variable to that uh, in that update statement. Same thing, same net result, or is it? So uh, will there be an exception? If so, on what line? Will, it be, will the exception be on line 136 or on 137? Exception on 136. No exception. No exception. No data. Drop database. <laughs> we should check that out. Okay, well, it, uh, it actually just truncates quietly and hopes that's what you wanted. Very different from what we saw a moment ago. So this was, I was, wanted to focus on this one. I, I kind of jumped ahead a second ago. This bothers me. I don't like this. And I started to say this a minute ago, uh, this use of a variable, assigning a too long string to a variable will simply truncate and not give you any kind of warning. And the same thing works if you have a string parameter to a stored procedure. It will just truncate it and not say anything. And so that's one behavior that bothers me and I don't think I can justify that one. So, so that's, I've, I've seen that cause evil things to happen. Okay, so way too moo, that's the first 10 characters. So it behaves differently whether it's, a, whether it's assigning to a table column or to a variable. Okay, approximate data types. Does this make sense? You know, the old thing, horseshoes and can grenades, close enough is what counts. Well, there's, SQL does have approximate data types, uh, float and real, and they're a little, um, so in other languages, they call them float and double float. In SQL, they call them real and float. So float is to real as double float is to float. Okay, I hope that, you may have to play that one back again just to, so. Okay, so let's, uh, let's play with some things here. I'm gonna uh, delete a row from that table just because it, it doesn't help for the demonstration. I'm gonna add a column to that table, make it a, a type real, which is the smaller version of the float, which uh, is seven significant figures. And uh, I'm gonna, just for convenience of populating, I'm gonna say it's not null and give it a default value so that it automatically populates it and then show me the results of that. <clears throat> so here, we, down below, we have the results of that. So show me all the rows where the amount is, 1002, et cetera. And of course, all of them are that way because that was what I gave it as a default. So now, let's see what happens. Uh, I'm, I'm, I just updated that table, partially to show the real value of float and real, is that it can show a wide range of super tiny and super large values because it used exponential notation. Uh, so that's, that's where its real intended value is. But anyway, uh, I used the ID as an input to this strange calculation, but as you can see, it's displayed on line two to have that same value we had before as the default. So if I run the statement 171 through 173, will I get one row? Or will there be something strange happen because I made that as the default value? Or will I get something, or will I get an exception? <laughs> What's that? Zero. zero rows. Zero, zero, zero rows. Okay, I have zero. I have, surely somebody's saying exception, so we'll go with that. And then, uh, so uh, any, any other, other than zero? One row, okay, that kind of seems obvious, right? Uh, and does anyone think that the default will throw it off because you know that's what the default was and would it give more than one? Three. Three, okay, somebody's gotta say it, right? No rows, nothing matches that. Now this is not, a, I didn't do strange cut and paste on the, uh, uh, th this is the, the one example where I thought having it as screenshots would say, I don't believe what you did there, I think you just cut and paste some funny stuff. No, this is really what I ran. I had it show what's in the test table, 167 and 168, and you can see in row two, 100857, and that is exactly the value that I placed in that select statement below. Why did it not show the one where the value is what the value says it is? Is that an integer or a float? That is a real, which is the short float. But you're comparing it to a float or a real. Like, what's the conversion there? Well, uh, Good question. Um, let's let's look at something. Uh, let's look more detail here. So there is, if if I want to convert that value to something that forces it to display the hidden integers or hidden digits, excuse me, 
So uh, I mentioned a minute ago that real is seven significant figures, and then as far as it's concerned, it's garbage after that, because you don't care, because it's an approximate value. You wouldn't use this for accounting, right? <laughs> okay, we'll move on. Um, so, um, uh, so this is just to display what, what those hidden digits are. And so if, even though in the amount column it says 1002857, we see if I convert that to a decimal, 38 digits, 20 of them to the right of the decimal, it shows more detail, more, uh, I don't know, uh, precision. Precision is not the same thing as accuracy. It shows more precision. Uh, and so if I run that query with 187 through 189, uh, then I get that one, okay? So even though it says it's 1002857, it is that other value, okay? So this, uh, do I need the trailing zeros? No, no. In fact, good question. You know, there's, there's um, the old rule is that a good question is answered by a slide later in the presentation, and a great question is answered by the next slide, so, <laughs> so or something like unto it. Um, so here is a ridiculous statement. Show me the rows where the amount is equal to all these various different values. Okay. <laughs> How many rows are we going to get back? Zero, one, exception, cause somebody got the exception. Okay. We get one row back. Yeah. What? <laughs> Float and real are approximate data types. So, yeah, it's close enough, is what it's saying. And in fact, uh, I, lines 190 and 197 are kind of the boundaries of the values that it would accept as being equal to that value. Okay. So uh, yeah, all, we're all, it's equal to all of those. Okay, now let's let's shrink that. Yes. Does that have anything to do with storing numbers in certain columns to like combinations, binary fractions, or something like that? Uh, so it, it does have the way it have to do with the way the number is stored, and it really. Um, let's see. Let me think about this. In, in Java, for example, if you have a float, I think it hides three digits from you, so that if you divide one by three and then multiply it by three again, then you end up with one instead of 0 0.9999. And I think it's the same kind of thing where that it, uh, it retains some digits in there. And yet, at the same time, sometimes those digits are just garbage. So if you divide uh, one by three, it may not be just three, 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 three. It might be three, 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 one, seven, nine, or some, just something ridiculous. So uh, the point is that they're, they're approximate numbers. It's garbage after that. Don't depend upon them being, you know, it, it doesn't, uh, it, it, and I, I'm not sure about this, but I think if you even had a different processor, you might get different va values from that. But I'm not sure about that. So, uh, okay, so here's, here's a condensed version of that, that, uh, that last statement, where that it's equal to these two values, the blah, 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 11 and blah, 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 12. And obviously, obviously, it is equal to both of those. <laughs> now, what happens if I expand this to line 191 and say where those two are equal to each other? Because obviously, amount is equal to one, amount of transitive property, right? Amount is equal to A, amount is equal to B, so therefore A and B are equal to each other, right? No rows. No? No rows? Exception? Someone say exception? Okay. No rows. So what's happening here? Data type conversion again. Those values that I placed, those literals I placed in there, are not floats. Those are fixed decimal exact value numbers. The amount is a float, and so when it did this, it had to make them the same type, and so it converted the decimal to a float and said, oh, it's close enough. But line 191, what type of data, what data type conversion happened on one line 191? None. Those are fixed position decimal places, and it's saying, obviously, I need to be careful about using the obviously phrase in this, in this presentation, but obviously those are not equal to one another. And so it doesn't matter what all the rest of it said, those two decimal exact values are not equal to one another. Yes? So if we run 187 through 189, so we adjust the numbers and not have the trailing 21, that was when we got the negative. Correct. 
when we ran, yeah, if we ran 187 through 189 and we got rid of the trailing 11, we would get no results because it's actually a just slight bit more than that, approximately, <laughs> kind of, within a, within, a, within a grenade's distance of that. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, okay. Well, anyway, okay, enough craziness. So a lot, of this, a lot of this was the issue of implied data types and implied data type conversions and, and also the common abuse of approximate data types and thinking of them as actual values. They're, they're rough guesses. So pluses and minuses. Uh, the plus sign can be used to affirm the sign of a value, and it's also used for addition. And as you can see here, lines 253 and 254, plus two returns two, plus two plus two returns four, okay? What do you think we'll get if we run lines 257 through 259? And perhaps a, a side question, as those of you who are familiar with other languages, does the increment uh, operator exist here? <laughs> so what do you think we'll get? when we do plus, 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 whatever, two, will we get four, four, and four? Or we get uh, three, and will it pre-increment, or it is, yeah, I'm trying to remember what, yeah. What are we gonna get? How many say four, four, four? Okay, good, one person. Okay. Six, eight, and ten. Six, eight, and ten. Oh, that's a good thought. Okay, what else? Exception. Exception, <laughs> yes. I should just say that's, you know, whenever you have a post-mortem on something, Whenever something goes wrong, there's a post-mort. Our routine is the first thing you go, even before people show up, is to write, communicate better. That's always, you know, that's always the case. We should have done that better. And I think you know, on these, we should always say exception, because you know, that's just probably one of the things. That... Okay, anything else? No, they're just kind of for decoration. I was right. Hey! <laughs> Let's see, that's a pretty good percentage, because you were one out of all of us. I wasn't sure, so I'm, so, I'm, <laughs> so um, okay, so yeah, those pluses are just kind of decorations. They, they, they don't have any impact at all. So let's mix some pluses and minuses. So plus a minus two and plus a minus two, and then uh, 10 minutes? Oh, well, I have to add more minutes if I, I doubt. Um, so plus, uh, uh, so what do you think this is gonna be? Oh, wait. You already know that because you're looking at the screen. That was a test. That was well done. Very, very nicely done. So plus or minus two and plus or minus two is negative four because the pluses are, you know, just almost like white space, really. And then let's go to 277 through 278. I ran that plus, minus, plus, minus, blah, 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 you know. Really, it comes down to how many negative signs. Is there an even number of negative signs in front of the value? Then it's positive. If there's an odd number of negative signs, it's negative, okay? So then, so here's a simplified version. What are we going to get if you run lines 281 through 282? Zero and negative four. <laughs> two and an exception. Four, four, z. Okay. What's that? Communicate better. Communicate better. Excellent. <laughs> yes. Actually, we do get communicate better. <laughs> You notice there's no results tab at all? This is a parsing error. My editor said, that is a ridiculous statement. I'm not even gonna send it to the engine. <laughs> Why did it do that? What, that's, what's two minus a negative two? That seems reasonable. Oh, good man, yes. <laughs> yes. This is probably my favorite. I, when I was trying to cut down the presentation, I, I just didn't want to take this one out. So, so yeah, a double hyphen is a, is a comment. So select with nothing after it. That makes no sense. OK. And by the way, I, I discovered this behavior when I, accident, when I had a bug in something where I was trying to concatenate strings, and I'd done some kind of search and replace, and I had two consecutive pluses. And it turns out consecutive pluses on concatenation are ignored as well. So you select x plus blah, 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 y. It concatenates them, it doesn't care. So, okay, trading places. Uh, I'm gonna set, declare, and initialize two variables, val1 to, interestingly enough, the value one, 
And then uh, two, to value two, I have commented out what I'm going to do as the test, and then I'm showing on line 310 what the values are. So the question is, when I uncomment line 309, will it trade places, or will it cascade and they'll both be the same? Or will there be an exception, of course, yeah. Cascade. Cascade, I hear cascade. Someone else says? Trade places. Trade places. Thank you, thank you. Because someone, why would I have the movie reference here? Okay, so in this case, they actually cascade. So uh, with, um, with a select statement, when we're talking about variables, the select statement with the comma is really the same thing as two separate set statements, and it happens in order. Logically, just does this, and it does that. This is, this is almost like a, just a syntax convenience, but it sets the two in separate, as if they're done in separate statements. Okay, let's see what it happens when you do this with uh, a, uh, values in a table. So I've updated the table to show, uh, set this up so that it'll work, or, or at least it'll demonstrate something. Uh, so I have one, two, three, and then two, four, and six. The name is twice the value of the ID. And then you can see at lines 334 on, I'm going to do the same kind of thing where that I tell it to put the name in the ID and put the ID in the name. So what's gonna happen? Will they trade places or will they cascade? Trade places. Someone has the exception? Okay, good. Okay, <laughs> trade places, yes. They, uh, they actually do trade places. SQL has this concept of all at once behavior. So in a statement, whatever is happening on that line needs to happen, needs to behave as if they happen in the same instance, not sequentially. So I could have done them in either order. And it's almost as if it pulls the values that it's going to need to reference into memory and then puts them into places they need to go to. The exact opposite behavior from what we saw with variables. Okay. And also, you know, I keep, I run this again, it switches them back, I run them again, it switches them forward, and so it's, it's, it's we have five minutes. This is, uh, okay, okay. Null. Um, null, I'm going to, um, I, I've deleted everything from the table and inserted a bunch more rows, and I'm showing the results of those rows, and the point of, the point, the thing I'm pointing out is on line three, uh, where the ID is three, the name is null. And I'm gonna kind of breeze past this a little bit because I'm hoping everyone is familiar with the concept of null. This depends upon that. Null <laughs> is, <laughs> well, null is um, like, what, what would you expect to get if I run this statement, 363 through 370? Show me the ones where the name is equal to null, show that it's not equal to null, or either way, or it's not equal to, or it's not not equal, and you get nothing. There is no, any comparison to null, equality or inequality or, or even inverting that, it's, null is a marker for not applicable, or hasn't been determined yet, or maybe it has been determined, but we don't know what it is yet, or could be anything, it's just, it's not a value, it is the vast unknown. So comparison to nulls have to be done with the is null syntax. So that's how you get those values. And as another emphasis on this, it doesn't step back and say, look at your where clause here on 392 through 394, any value in there, any string is either equal to four, the string four, or it's prior to, or it's after. There's no other option. It's gotta be one of those. And yet, if with null is in there, it doesn't step back and make that decision. It's, it looks at each of those sub-statements and says, it doesn't qualify for any one of these, okay? So with that in mind, I wanna show the table again, and we're gonna do something kind of freaky. Um, <clears throat> line 437, uh, selects the name, the list of names from the test table, which are two, four, and null, and it says, show me the ones where the ID is not one of those. Okay, so the one with the ID of two, there is a two in the name list, so that, would, that row would be excluded. Would we expect rows one and three to be returned? Just one. Just one? Okay, how about none? <laughs> okay. Yes, so this requires a little explanation. I'll be fast. So here's the original, uh, I'm showing down at the bottom the values we're, we're playing with. 435 through 437 is the, is the current statement. I'm going to rewrite line 437. The select name from, that returns, as you see on line 441, the values 2, 4, and null. Okay. In 
can be translated into a series of ors. So that translates to line 445 where not id equals 2 or id equals 4 or id equals null. Okay, De Morgan's, we have a not. So we have nots on each and invert the or and. And so now line 4, 449, we have not equal to 2 and not equal to 4 and not equal to null. Those are ands, so it must meet all those criteria. And under what circumstances will something be, the id be equal null? Never. Not on that. Never. And we have ands, so nothing will ever qualify for that. If you have something that looks, for, does a lookup, and there's a null in, a possibility in what you're looking up, you will get this weird behavior. Okay, last thing. I have a minute and a half. Two minutes. Oh, I can talk fast. <laughs> but, okay, default schema. We are going to create, some, create two schemas and create identical procedures in those two schemas. So this standard create schema process, test one and test two, and then procedures get my data, how creative, in test one and test two, and both of them say select star from test table. <clears throat> and line 440 through 465 through 66, I even have a comment at the end, just a reminder of what those procedures have inside them. And so we run that and we get the same results. Look at lines 468 and on the next few lines. I'm going to create another table called test table, but I'm going to put it in the other schema. And I'm going to put some values in it. What am I going to get when I run 471 to 472? Will I get the same thing? Realizing that SQL does cache query plans when you run it the first time. So there is a cache query plan in there from lines 465 and 466. What's going to happen? How many rows will I get from, is it, will I get six rows again? Exception, thank you, yeah, yeah it's got to communicate better, yeah, okay. Okay, I did not change either stored procedure. I created a new table, and suddenly the stored procedure is grabbing that new table instead. Why? At runtime, it, you, it, if we don't specify a schema, I, when I do a training on this, I like to talk about how you should, you should always specify the schema on your objects. Here I just said from test table. You should always specify the schema unless you like surprises. Uh, and that this is an example of the surprise you get. The store procedure in a test one schema will default to grabbing other objects in its own schema if it can find them. If it can't find them, then it defaults to the other default of DBO. So what happens if I run, so here I run those again, now I have that status, now I drop those, that table. I go back to the original. So uh, when, should you, when, you, when should you specify your explicit schemas when you want to know what you're going to get? <laughs> <laughs> okay, SQL gods must be crazy, and uh, yeah, Coke bottle. Um, so implicit data types, type conversions, uh, the hierarchy is important, and the one that might surprise you is that it'll convert strings to numbers. If you don't want to do that, then tell it to do something different, or use try convert if you want to get rid of exceptions. String concatenation happens differently. Variables, it truncates, doesn't say anything, no warning, just do it. Whereas if it's a table value, it will say, that's not permitted. If you want to allow that, you need to change your statement to, to make sure it doesn't, doesn't do that. Uh, comparing approximate values, float and real. Yeah, comparing, well, it's, it's horseshoes. Trading places works with uh, uh, table column values. Doesn't behave the same way with variables and not in null, that's probably the creepiest one I've seen. And then the default schema, it's, uh, it's not always DBO because it's the, it's the schema of the object itself first. Okay, I think I'm out of time, but uh, questions? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.